Hi and welcome to some more adventures in Adobe Illustrator. Today we're going to be looking at preferences, the shape builder tool, the pathfinder panel and the pen tool which is one of the most powerful tools that you'll use in Adobe Illustrator. First I'd like to start with preferences and this is one of the ways that we help set up documents um, within Adobe Illustrator. Now I've already got a document open here so when I set the preferences it'll just be setting the preferences for this one document but if you would like to change your preferences so that they are set as your default you can do that before you open up any document. So I'm going to go to Illustrator CC here. This is on a Mac and you'll find your preferences under this menu. If you're on a PC it'll be under file and down the bottom. So we'll go to preferences general. Now within this dialog box we have a whole heap of different things that we can change. Today we're just going to have a look at units and at the user interface. In units I have mine set as my general is millimeters. Now that's what I want mine set in but you might find when you open yours up it might be set in points and that might not be a very useful uh, unit of measure for how you're measuring your artboard, how you're measuring your shapes and things like that. So you might want to change that to millimeters. I'm going to leave my stroke in points and my type in points. The next one I'm going to have a look at here is the user interface. So at the moment I have mine set to the default which is medium dark but you can scroll through these and have a look how they change your user interface and this will come down to a personal preference. It might be uh, how you like to visualize your screen, what looks best as you're working. So have a bit of a look at that. Uh, you can also change your canvas color or your um, pasteboard color as I like to call it. So we can change that to white and you can see the difference there. Uh, but I like to match mine here. But again, that's very much a personal preference. There's no right or wrong. You can also change some of the scaling tabs, things like that. So have a look at all the different um, preferences that you have. We're just looking at those two for now. And I'm clicking OK. So I've also brought up my rulers. And I do that by hitting Command R. So that's removing and Command R brings them back. Or you can find them under View, Rulers. I find that just really handy for knowing where you are within a space. Fabulous. So we've had a bit of a look at preferences. Next, we're going to have a look at the Shape Builder tool. Now we've had a look at how to make some shapes, but now we're going to start looking at how you can join some shapes together. So what I'm going to do to show you the Shape Builder tool is going to have a look at creating a love heart. I'm going to use two ellipses and a diamond to create a love heart. So I've got my ellipse tool here. I'm going to click, holding down Shift and drag. And I'm going to change the colour. So I'm popping out my swatches menu here. I've just got my Essentials Classic. Um, set up at the moment. So we'll make it red with no stroke. Fantastic. I can pop that away. Going back to my selection tool and I'm going to hold down um, Option or if you're on a PC it's Alt and click and drag. I'm holding down Shift as well just to constrain it to the same alignment as my previous shape that I had made and I have now two circles. Now I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, uh, click and drag holding out Shift and with my selection tool, I'm going to rotate again, holding down shift because that will mean that it just moves straight to that 45 degree angle. I'm just going to bump this up, make it a little bit bigger until I'm sort of happy with how that shape is looking. Make it a little bit bigger again. There we go. Yep. Keep going until I'm happy with that shape. Okay, and I just want to move this point out of the way. So I'm going to use my direct selection tool for that. I can just uh, double click on this one anchor and drag it and move it out of the way. So what I have here now is what looks to be a love heart shape but at the moment it's made up of three separate vectors and I'd like to make these into one vector. Now the reason for that is I might want just to have an outline of a heart because if I do that now at the moment this is a field if I switch this over and I have just a stroke you can see here it doesn't really look like a love heart anymore because it's got all these shapes in between that's because they're different shapes that are layered up but if I have them all selected and flip them back to the field they look like one shape but I actually want to make them into one shape and rather than having to draw that out I can use these shapes and just connect them so I have these highlighted and next I will go to my shape builder tool that's over here in my tools panel and it's this one here, it's got a small circle with a large circle and an arrow. And what I can do is when I just roll over with my cursor, you can see it starts highlighting this hash pattern over the top of the different shapes. And if I click and drag, you can see it's sort of adding those together. And I'll just draw over every single shape. And when I let go, what Adobe has done is actually created that as one shape. Now you can see if I select off this blue line around the outside is my vector line. Instead of being made up of three separate vectors, I just have this one vector that goes around the outside. 
and I can demonstrate that quite well if I change that over to being just a stroke instead of a fill and a stroke. So there we go. I've now made a love heart shape. This was made out of two circles and a diamond, which I've moved around a little bit and then used my shape builder tool to turn it into a shape. Now, there's lots of different things you could do there. Let's um, try another version. This time I'm going to make a sort of a mouse kind of shape with some eyes. And let's pop this sort of brown colour in the fill. I'm going to click and drag myself out a circle. So that'll be the face and a couple of ears. Yeah, I'm going to do them kind of different sizes and then I'm going to create some eyes and these ones I'm going to make white because I'm not going to include them in my final shape. I might make them some kind of these sort of interesting big and little eyes. There we go. So it's kind of, you know, like a funny mousy looking shape. What I want to do is I want to use this shape, this shape and this shape, the brown circles to create shapes and leave these circles out of it. So again, I'm going over to my shape builder tool, which is this one here. And again, I'm just going to draw through the bits that I want to keep. So you can see there, I didn't draw through the white eyes, just through the outside. Fantastic. And now I have this shape. And you can see if I um, flip that round to just the stroke, what that does a bit differently. There we go. And you can see uh, these parts. So these are the circles. They weren't included. So I can actually just delete those. And now I have this shape. And what's cool about this is these eyes are actually see-through. So they look right through the shape to the other side. I'll demonstrate that now. This is the first shape that I created. So it's on the bottom of the hierarchy. Then I created this shape next. So it's sitting on top at the moment. I'm just going to drag that over. And can you see how, because I used the shape builder on the outside shapes, it didn't include these circular eyes so now I can see through them. So that might come in handy if you're trying to make some shapes that aren't just shapes sitting on top of each other but actually have holes punched through. Something that you can do with the shape builder tool. So that's a little bit of a look at that. Have a little bit of a play with it. See what other types of shapes you can make. The next one that I'd like to have a look at is another way of combining shapes together. Pathfinder panel. But I'm just going to create myself another artboard and I'm going to do that over here in my artboard panel. Now I'm just going to click new and pop that away for now. Fantastic. Now with the Pathfinder panel, I'm going to use circles for this. I'm just going to layer up a couple of different circles. So I've got one here. I'll zoom a bit in a bit so we can see a bit better. And I'm going to click and drag this over again, holding down Option or Alt if you're on a PC. And I'll change the color of this circle. So now I have a yellow circle and a red circle. And I'm going to use these to change the shape and show how the Pathfinder panel can be quite powerful for cutting out shapes and creating new shapes and combining shapes together. So I need to have my Pathfinder panel open and I go to Window and Pathfinder and you see it's this one here. I'm actually just going to pop that over in the side panel over here and you can see it's this sort of square overlaid with another square and I'll have that open. So within the Pathfinder panel, we have shape modes and we have the Pathfinders. And if you hover over each of these, they have a name. So this one's called Unite, Minus Front, Intersect, Exclude, Divide, Trim, Merge, Crop, Outline, and Minus Back. So they all do slightly different things. We're going to have a look at a few of these, but then have a bit of a play yourself just to see how you can get other ones to work and what they do. So I'm going to highlight both of those shapes and go to this first one. So Unite. What this is going to do when I click it is actually bring those shapes together. So I clicked it together and it's combined the shape that was sitting behind with the shape that's sitting in front. And now I have this vector that goes around the two shapes. So instead of the circle cutting through the back there, it uh, goes around the outside. The next we're going to have a look at, uh, we're going to do that same, those same shapes. Might just grab those and shrink them down a little bit. And here I'm going to draw two circles and color one of them blue. And I might actually just copy those down the page because we're going to do slightly different things to them the whole way along. So I'll grab that and again, click and drag, click and drag. And click and drag. Now I have a whole bunch of shapes that I can do different things with and I'll open up my Pathfinder panel. So zooming in on the next two objects and with them selected, let's have a look at this next one. So this is called minus front. So at the moment I have a red 
circle sitting behind and a yellow in front. And if I click minus front, what it's going to do is it's almost going to cookie cutter this top shape out of the bottom shape. So what will be left is this red part and wherever it overlaps here with yellow will disappear. So if I come over here to minus front and select that, you see now all I have left is this chunk of where it was overlaid. Move over to the next one and with both of those selected, I'm going to go to this one. This is called intersect. So this means anywhere where the lines intersect together will remain and everything else will be removed. So I click that one and you can see here now just that um, sort of shape in the centre of the two circles has remained. Next one is the opposite, exclude. So anywhere where it overlaps will be excluded and the rest of the shape on the outside will become part of the one shape. So again, here we go. You can see it's excluded this middle um, section that overlapped and kept the rest as part of the shape. Here we go. We'll go over to the pathfinders next. Divide is one that I use a lot. And what that does is anywhere where vectors overlap, it, uh, Adobe will create new shapes. So what that's going to do is going to create uh, three shapes because I have this shape, I have this shape where it's overlaid in the middle, and this shape on the outside. So with those selected, I'm going to hit divide. Now it doesn't look like it at the moment. If I select off that with my selector and then click it again, you'll see it's still all one shape. It looks like that. But actually what it is is three shapes grouped together, which brings us on to grouping, which is a really useful tool. When you use Pathfinder functions, it will group shapes together and you can ungroup them as you need to. So I'm going to ungroup these shapes here. There's a few different ways of doing that, but I'm going to use my right mouse button and scroll down here to ungroup. Now when I select off those and I come back on, I can actually pull them apart. And here now I have three separate shapes. I can colour them differently from each other. As you can see here, uh, I could change where they sit and I can move them around. So that's one thing that I can do with ungrouping. I can ungroup objects so that I can move them around, but I can also group them back together again. So here I'm just going to draw a, mark, a lasso marquee around those and group them back together. So right mouse button, click and group. Now, when I pick up any point in that group, it will move them all together uniformly, which is really handy. It means that it's a way of organizing my space and organizing groups of objects together so they stay exactly where you want them to be. Uh, now I'm going to show you another way of entering and exiting groups, which means that you don't have to ungroup them and then group them back together. You can leave them grouped and this is a way of going sort of inside the group to change the layout and then go back outside again. So I have this group of three objects. I'm going to select it. Now I'd like to go inside this group. So what I'm going to do is double click. And you'll see a change up here on the left hand side of the screen. It tells us we're on layer one and we're inside this group. Now I can actually access these different shapes. I could change their color again, uh, move them around, and do different things with them. But you notice over here, it's sort of shaded out these bits that are outside of the group and I can't access them, which is quite handy. It just means I'm just working on just this internal group and popping those bits together, having a bit of a play with them. Now, if I'd like to go back outside the group, I can either just double click anywhere on my artboard or I can go up here to the arrow and click back until I get to my layer. And here I have my group again, it's still grouped together. So that's also quite handy. Something to know about Pathfinder. When you select a Pathfinder, it will group your objects together. Now I have a couple more down here. We'll just run through a couple more things on Pathfinder. So I've also got this one, Trim. If I select this one, what it does, it keeps the visual shape, but it'll delete any other vectors that are sitting behind the shapes. And here we've got Merge. Again, quite similar and crop and we won't go through those today but have a bit of a play and see what works for you pathfinder can be really useful for creating different shapes fabulous I'm gonna pop those all on that artboard and we're gonna have a look now at the pen tool so we'll create a new artboard to be working on in our artboard panel that's over here I'll go out a little bit and this is my pen tool we're just going to start with a pen tool this is something that takes a lot of practice it's not really intuitive it doesn't necessarily work how you think it will and it takes a bit of getting used to so don't feel discouraged it is one of the most useful tools i find in adobe illustrator but also one of the most difficult to learn i'm going to start just with a black stroke so we can see what we're working on and i'll remove this yellow fill put my swatches away now the first one i'm going to show you is just geometric shapes with the pen tool and all we need to do for that is just click once and drop anchors and all I'm doing is clicking and clicking 
and clicking. I'm not clicking and dragging. I'm just clicking and then letting go. And this part here is just me moving my cursor around the board. And when I'm ready, I can click again, click again, and then I can come back up to the original anchor. And you see that little circle that pops up? That means I'm going to close the path to make a shape. So all I did there is I dropped different uh, um, anchor points and then Adobe made a path between them. The way I like to think about that is a little bit like thumbtacks. I'm putting a thumbtack down and then there's a string between them. So thumbtack, string, thumbtack, string, thumbtack, string. And this is how we can make some different shapes. Now, just like any vector that you make within Adobe Illustrator, you can apply effects, you can apply a fill, you can apply a stroke, different colors. I'm just going to leave that one for now. And we'll have a look at the next thing, which is a Bezier curve. Now this is how we sort of start getting those organic shapes within Adobe Illustrator. And this time, instead of just clicking once with our mouse, we're going to click and hold down the cursor and drag out what we call handles. And I'll show you that. So I'm going to click, I'm holding down, I'm dragging. Can you see these handles popping out? They will give me a curved line. Now when I let go, you see my previewed line is curved. And again, I can click and I'm holding down and I'm dragging out some handles and I let go. And again, my previewed line is curved. I'm going to click and hold down and drag. Again, I have some handles. Click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. And here I have this curved line, which I have created with the pen tool. I'm going to pop that over there. We're now going to have a look at mixing curves or Bezier curves with geometric angles. So I have my pen tool. I'm just going to click once this time. So I have at the moment an anchor that has no Bezier curve attached to it. And then now I'm going to make a curve. So I'm clicking and dragging out some handles. And I'm going to just again click once. So this time because I just clicked, you can see this preview coming out is straight. So again, I'm going to click and I just have a straight line because I just clicked once and I'm going to click and drag. So now I have a Bezier curve. If I hold down Option, I can change the angle of this handle. There we go. So I'm going to click and drag and hold down Option. I get a different tool that comes up. This is the anchor point tool. And I can move that handle and then I can put another anchor in. Again, clicking and dragging, holding down Option bringing that handle around and dropping another anchor. So this takes quite a bit of getting used to. And there are a few different ways that people change between Bezier curves to straight geometric lines. And you'll find what works best for you. But really, that's just an initial look at the pen tool. So we can make straight lines, we can make Bezier curves, and we can go between Bezier curves and straight lines and also change the angle of the curves. I'm going to create one more here just for now. So this will be again with Bezier curves and I'm going to just create a closed shape. So again, clicking, dragging out these curves, clicking, dragging out these curves. Again, I'm just kind of moving around the board and you don't have to go fast. You can just go really nice and slow. And I'm coming around to the first point that I started with. And again, that circle pops up. So I know I'm closing the shape. And there I go, I have my organic shape there. Again, I could come in with my direct selection tool that we've looked at before, where I can select points and move them around. With my direct selection tool, I can also change these handles. Let's have a play with that. Then there are some tools underneath the pen tool. I'm going to hold down the pen tool and sort of tear off that tab there. So I've got all my pen tools available. And you can see here I have plus anchor point, minus anchor point, or delete anchor point rather, and the anchor point tool. So this one adds in anchor points. If I select that and I click anywhere on my line, it's going to add in some extra anchor points. But then if I want to delete those anchor points, I can come in with this one and delete them and you'll see how it changes my line. And if I want to start editing any of them, so I go to my anchor point tool and you can see here, I can start editing individual handles, how they look, or I can click on anchor points and remove any handles from them by clicking once, or I might want to add handles. There we go bit of a play with those as well and see how they feel. This is something that takes quite a lot of practice. There's an excellent online game, which I'll just pop in the notes that you can play, which sort of helps you get used to how the pen tool works. But it's just a really powerful and useful tool in Adobe Illustrator. So I hope those few new tools and panels have been helpful um, and you enjoy practicing them.
Thanks, everybody.